Good afternoon once more and welcome back to another edition of the Watchman Radio Program. And I want to take this opportunity just to uh, recognize all of my listeners, all of my faithful listeners all around the world, wherever you are. Uh, whether you listen to me live or via YouTube, I know that you are all over the place there are countries and islands that I can't even pronounce <laughs> but uh, I do have a fairly good idea uh, of where you are and where you're listening from and I know that you have taken uh, the time out to listen to this program so I believe that God has uh, been speaking to you and has speak through you and I en would encourage you to continue to tune into this broadcast and continue to share this broadcast with uh, all those that are around you on your medias and uh, your Facebooks and so on. God is doing something new and big in this time and we have to get the word out and this is what uh, we're all about here. And so, again, thank you for tuning in to the next edition of the Watchman Radio Program. Of course, uh, you know me, I'm your host, Minister Curtis Roach. I'm from Child Revival Tamanaka. And this program is all about the end times and to open your awareness to the times that we are living in and to make you aware of the nearness and the imminent and the soon coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Because, yes, He is indeed coming very, very soon. You know, everywhere you turn, everywhere you look, you know, the signs are everywhere. It's just undoubtable right now. There's no doubt to those who are in tune to the Spirit that the return of our Savior is right around the corner. And today I want to share with you two letters that were received from the Lord. From time to time I do share with you letters that were received through Susan Davis, the prophetess of the Lord, uh, which uh, he uses her for this uh, particular purpose and she has received two letters um, within this month that I want to share with you and every time the Lord sends a letter sends, sends a word I want to make sure that you get it because it is so vital and it is so important in this time and in these times that we hear from him and you know he's uh, warning us he's sending us word of admonition words of uh, encouragement and so on and you know it's good that the lord has seen fit you know to reach us to try to reach us and try to reach you in this way because you know he didn't have to he just did not have to but he's going all out he's using all the necessary means to make sure that he sends his word out to make sure that you get the necessary warnings that you need and you know at the end of the day none of us absolutely none of us will have an excuse any excuse at all to say lord i wasn't ready or lord i didn't hear lord nobody came to me the Lord is making sure today that each one of us, each one of you, get your warning. And none of us will have the opportunity at the day of judgment to say that they didn't hear or nobody told them or they didn't know. Amen. Okay, so we get into the letters. As I said, uh, Susan Davis, uh, she received two letters uh, this month. And the first one she received was on the 12th of February. Of course, we are in the year 2014. The first letter is entitled, All is About Choices. Choosing life with me or death with my enemy. And I'll read this letter. Susan, this is your God. I'm ready to give you words. I am the God of the heavens. I am the God of the earth. I am about to remove my bride from the earth. 
to take her out to safety, to allow her to be freed from the world. The world is full of evil, evil intent. Evil, my children, is all that goes against me, God. Rebellion is that which goes against my will and my ways. I have set before your choice. I have given you opportunity to choose the direction you want to move in, whether it is with my enemy or with me, your maker. If you choose with my enemy, you will be lost for eternity in hell. If you choose for me, then you may come out with me when I come to get my bride, my true church. This is who I will be coming back to get, to receive unto myself, to pull to safety. All the others who choose against me will remain behind. One of two things will happen to those who remain behind. They will either be left to face the wrath of my enemy and the wrath of God simultaneously while alive on the earth, or they will be caught up in the sudden destruction that will come upon the earth immediately following the removal of the church, the bride. It is that simple. Those who are not pulled free when I come to rescue my own and are caught in sudden destruction will be caught up into eternity, will be caught up into eternal damnation apart from the living God. This is serious, my children. You must sober yourselves and come to the realization that the world is about to be overrun by horror and I will be removing the bride and the earth will not look the same. Although the earth is beginning to cave in on itself through gross evil taking over the four corners of the globe, come to your senses. See your humble God. I gave all for you. I bled on a cross of death for my people so that they might live with me for eternity. I gave compassionately and now you must choose who you want to follow and what you want to believe. Do you want to believe my words? The words of my book that I have given for you to wash yourself in? This is the work of my spirit to provide you with access to my words, my truth, my ways. Do you want to get to know me in humble intimacy through prayer, through seeking me, through worship and time spent together? You must choose. There are choices to make. Time spent pursuing the world or time spent pursuing your God and knowing me and my ways. All is about choices. Choosing life with me or death with my enemy submit to me and live run from me and my ways and you will be lost for all eternity you have free will to choose but the offer will not always be available so think this through carefully as your time to choose for me your God is shortening every day I love you but I will not always be so patient with this gross, evil world. This is your God. The God who is loving, kind, and long-suffering. Yahushua Hamashaik. And the coordinating scriptures that came with this letter are Matthew chapter 12, verse 50. 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 23. Joshua chapter 24 verse 15 and the first Thessalonians 5 verses 3 and 6. So those are the scripture verses that uh, accompanied this letter. And the Lord is saying that it's all about choices and this letter is just telling you that you have a choice to make. We have free will, yes. 
And the Lord has made us that way so that we don't have to feel that we are enslaved or we are, you know, in some sort of a bondage that we cannot get out of. We do not feel encircled or, you know, anything like that. He has made us and gave us free will to choose whatever we want to choose for ourselves. Although he created us, although he is God over us, he does not exercise that that kind of a rule where it's it's uh, my way or no way over us. In, uh, on the other hand, he says, "Yes, I am your God, but I want you to choose me. I'm not going to make you do it. I want you." To make that choice for yourself. I'm giving you that freedom. To choose. And so this letter is telling us. You know. He, that we have that free choice. But the, the thing is. And the good thing about it is that. You know. Although he. Gave us that choice. He also told us that. What are the consequences. What are the pluses and what are the minuses of the two choices? In other words, he made it pollusively clear which way that you should go, which way is the best way, and which way is the wrong way. He, not, he did not leave it up to us to figure that out. And that is how merciful and good our God is. Is that he gave us the two choices and he, he's, he clearly indicates which choice is the best choice to make. And the Lord is going all out to make us see and know which choice is the best choice to make. And so it's all about us now. It, it's all in our hands now as to what decision we will make with regards to which choice we will make. Are we going to choose him? Or are we going to choose the ruler of this world, which is the devil? The Lord clearly indicates that in heaven, if you choose him, that he will take you to a place where you will live forever in peace, in love, a place where there is no death, a place where you will never get sick, where you can never get hurt, a place where you can never die, a place where you will have all what you need, where you don't have to work for it, where you don't have to buy it, where you don't have to earn it, you don't have to know somebody to get it, you don't have to have a good name to get it, you just have to choose him and receive it. Now how better can it get than that? How much better than that can it really get? A place where we live in bliss. It's, it is said that we will walk on streets of gold up there. You know, we don't have to vie for anything up there. We don't have to crave anything up there. Because everything will be there for us freely to enjoy. And not just for time, but for all eternity. The Lord is saying to make that choice. Make that conscious decision to go with him and enjoy yourself. Enjoy yourself in heaven. And the other choice that there is, is 
to go with his enemy, with your enemy, with the enemy of good. His name is the devil, Satan. And where he resides is called hell. And that place is a place where the fire never quenches. It is a place of torture. It is a place of torment. The Bible tells us that there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth there. It is a place where you are going to be burnt and you will not die. Your whole being, your whole body will be consumed with fire. Fire that is unquenchable. And it is not fire like we have here now. It is fire that burns so, so much hotter. There will be demons there tormenting you. They will be doing things that will normally kill you here now. But there you can never die. You will never die. You'll have to go through those torments, those torture, those pains for all eternity, forever. Again, it's your choice. We have heard so many testimonies on this program about what goes on down there. Because the Lord, again because of his mercies and his love and his compassion and his desire for no man to go there. He has made it possible for a few chosen ones to experience just a little bit of what is going on down there so that they can come back and warn us. And they have been doing so. But are you taking the warning? Are you listening? Or are you just thinking that they are telling lies or they're just making things up for recognition or for fame or for whatever reason? You know, if you're in tune with the Spirit of God, you will know that these things, the ones, I mean, I'm not saying that there are not those out there that are doing this for such a reason, but they are the authentic ones. I know for a fact that there are those that have seen the plays, that have experienced just a taste of what hell is really all about. And they have come back to tell us what it's all about. And they have warned us. And they have confirmed again what the Bible has said about it. And have gone into more details. But the choice again is yours. As the Lord said, all is about choices. So today are you going to choose life? Or are you going to choose death? And uh, don't be confused with... Uh, the word death when it says death is not you're not going down there to die because you have to experience these torture and these pains for all eternity we call it the second death yes but it's not a death where you just something happened to you and you just die and that's it it doesn't work like that in the realm of the spirit there is no death there is no physical death the death that is referred to is a spiritual death where you will be abandoned. Where you will be apart from your maker for all eternity. That is spiritual death. That is a death that you will experience but you yourself will be there. Fully alive to go through and to suffer for all eternity. So what would your choice be? What will your choice be today? Think seriously, as the word of God says. Think seriously about the decision that you will make. Realizing, of course, that time is extremely short. Extremely short. Very, very, very short. And so we don't really have time to be, you know, trying a coin and doing the heads and tail thing. We have to make that decision now. And today is a day of salvation. So I want to get to the second letter and this letter is uh, directed more to the lukewarm church and the title of the second letter which was received by Susan Davis on the 18th of February 2014 is Awaken O Lukewarm Church Awaken O Lukewarm Church and I'll read yes 
I am your God and I'm ready to give you words. My children, this is your God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I am a God who is dissatisfied. There is a stink and a stench rising up to my throne. It is the world under my feet, the world that is my footstool. I cannot tolerate the stink and the stench much longer. Children, you must ready yourselves. Get your garments cleaned up. Wash yourself in the blood I have given so freely to you. My blood is freely available. It is poured out for you to use. It is the blood that was made available when I died on the cross. Calvary's cross. A handsome price was paid. A giant sacrifice from God himself. My body torn to pieces by a pack of wolves. Evil man motivated by my enemy to pierce me. To whip and scourge me. To tear out my beard. To jive nails through my feet and hands. You must prepare yourselves my children. I am ready to begin anew. I am ready to bring my kingdom about, to start the reign and rule of the new Jerusalem with my lovely bride at my side. She pleases me so much. She has prepared herself and made herself ready. She is looking forward to my return. There are no words to describe my affection for her. She takes my breath away. I love to watch her. I love to see her and her affection for her God. My sweet church, who I love so much, my bride, my covenant bride, my lovely ones who do not become despondent in waiting for my return. I am waiting for the few, for the few more who will seek me, those who really want to be with me in the next life. Few have let go so completely of the world as my true bride. The rest cannot seem to let go, to turn their back to the evil world. They will soon have the marriage they are vying for. Marriage to an evil world in covenant with my enemy against me, their God. Awaken, O lukewarm church. Break free from this repulsive covenant. Tear your hearts away from the love of the world and the enemy. Wash your hands of this evil world. Come away with me and live free from evil. I am the only one who can save you from what is coming upon this evil earth. Dark days are soon ahead. Even now, it is already becoming so dark. A world that hates God. You must run to me. Make your way to me. I am not a man that I should lie. There are streams of living waters if you choose me. The hour is coming when this choice will not be an easy one. So think this through carefully. Take my book and read it. I will guide you. This is an edict from the throne room. This is your God, author of salvation. And the coordinating scriptures for uh, this letter are Matthew chapter 5, verse 35, Revelation chapter 19, verse 7. Matthew chapter 20 verse 19, Psalm chapter 22 verse 16, John chapter 7 verse 38. And those are the scriptures for this letter to the lukewarm church. A strict warning to those out there that simply put are playing the fool God he says that he is dissatisfied 
he is dissatisfied he has given you his word on how you are to live in this world he has laid out the guidelines in his book the book has all the information that we need which book am I talking about the Bible the word of God it has the answer to every question that we can ever ask anything that we want to find out about this life about how to live about what to do how to do it is in the book that book called the Bible no wonder he has to say that he is dissatisfied all the information that we need to have we have it but we are not making use of it in other circumstances we are just simply disobedient we know what the word says but we just choose not to do it and those of us who call ourselves Christian and fall into such categories the Lord is saying that you're lukewarm you're a lukewarm church and in the book of Revelation he said he's going to spew you out he's going to just spit you out in other words you're not going to go to heaven you're going to hell but the warning here that he's given is for you to clean yourself up and he says that his blood is still available the blood that was shed on the cross over 2,000 years ago it is still available for you to use today and the thing about that blood it has not lost its power there is still that same power in the blood of Jesus Christ that blood can wash you clean no matter what you have done or what sin you have committed it can wash you even though you have rejected him over and over and over and over and time again that blood can wash you if you go for it if you humble yourself under the mighty hand of God repent of your sins and be obedient to his word to every single tit of his word his blood is free there for you to go to for you to use for you to dive in for you to submerge yourself in to clean yourself up as he said in the letter he paid a very big price a very big price a giant sacrifice was made imagine God according to the book of John 3 16 that he gave his only begotten son how much of us will be willing to send our child our only child even if we had a hundred children how many of us will be willing to send one of them to die for somebody that don't even know you or for somebody don't that don't regard you or like you how much of us will be willing to do something like that for somebody else to give the life of our only child just so that somebody else can live <laughs> you know I can answer the question for you I believe none because even my, I myself it might be a very difficult thing for me to do at the moment if I'm confronted with such a decision I myself I cannot say that I'm sure which decision I would have made the right thing to do would be to give that life yes but when you're faced with it it's a different story it is a hard very hard decision to make but God but God he did it for you God was faced with that decision and without hesitation he did it for you for your sake see we cannot comprehend the love of God we cannot understand that love until we are ascended into heaven in our spiritual bodies I don't think we'll ever be able to understand the height and the depth of his love for us and why he did what he did but he did it just the same thank God he did it for you he did it for me he did it for every man woman boy and child on this earth every one of us he sacrificed his son Jesus Christ the letter says that his body was torn 
torn to pieces by a pack of wolves. Men, they just ripped him apart. They pierced him with a sword or with a spear. They whipped him, they scourged him. And it says here that they actually tore out his beard. They ripped his beard from his face. And at the end of it all, they drove some big long nails through his feet and his hands on a wooden cross. The Bible described and detailed and told us that he was disfigured beyond recognition. In other words, he was so badly beaten and torn up that if you were to see him, knowing who he was, you would not recognize him because he was so disfigured. He was so disfigured, so badly wounded. But why did he do it? He did it for you and for me so that we can have a chance to live. He died so that you and I could live he shed his blood so that his blood can serve as an atonement for our sins once and for all that blood will always have the power to wash you to clean you and to make you ready to go with him when he comes for his church you know there's nothing that we need to do as you've been hearing all the time there's nothing that you need to do. You cannot earn it. Even though you may want to try, you cannot. There's nothing you can do to earn what he is given. The good thing is, the price has been paid in full through what Jesus did on that cross over 2,000 years ago. He paid the ultimate price for our sins and he's telling us today that all we need to do is just come to him just freely come to him and ask his forgiveness wash yourself in his blood and you will have that eternal life he's coming back for a church that is washed that is pure a church that is ready a church that is watching and waiting a church that is not entangled with the world. A church that has set itself aside, apart from the world. A church whose affection is for him and not anything of the world. Have a look in your heart today and tell me, where is your affection? What is your affection for? Who is your affection for? That is a question that we need to ask ourselves daily because the Bible clearly tells us that whoever is a friend of the world is an enemy of God and you cannot love God and mammon. In other words, you're either on the left or you're either to the right. There's no middle ground. There's no in-between. You're either cold or you're hot. You're either for God or against Him. No middle ground. Make sure that you understand that very clearly. There's no middle ground. You have to be either or. And the moment that your affections are directed anywhere else besides God, you are against Him. No matter who you are, you may be a pastor, you may be an apostle, you may be a church leader. You call yourself a Christian. Maybe you preach every Sunday. Maybe you evangelize every day of the week. If your heart is not in the right place, it will remain in the wrong place. And it will direct you to the path of destruction. There's no two ways about it. You have to set your affections and direct them completely to the Lord. Which means that nothing in the world should please you. You should crave nothing of this world. Yes, we have to live with certain things and we have to use certain things to live. But your affections should not be for them. In other words, if you have them, you should have that mindset or that attitude that if you have it, you have it. If you don't, you don't. 
knowing that you have Jesus and that is all that matters the only thing that really matters for a true Christian the bride of Christ that is ready for him is Jesus knowing that Jesus will always look after us take care of us at all times and in every situation so again I'm encouraging you today to make the right choice choose God turn your back on evil turn your back on the devil today time is short the rapture of the church the rapture of the bride is right around the corner it is so much closer that most of us would not think so much closer but are you ready today should he come are you ready and I want to give each one of you a choice or the opportunity to make that decision today. You are listening to The Watchman. So if you're out there and you are listening to this broadcast, you realize that you know you have a choice to make a choice whether for God or whether for evil you can choose thank God to go to heaven today even though your bank account may be empty Even though you don't have nothing to eat tomorrow. Even though you live on the streets and you, you do not know anybody. Nobody knows you. Even though you are known murderer or known thief or known rapist. You have a choice today. You can choose to abandon your bad ways. You can choose to abandon the ways of this world. You can choose to abandon sin. You can choose against the enemy, against the devil himself. And choose God. Nobody can force you either way. God himself will not force himself on you. It is, it is a choice that you have to make for yourself. And you have that free will today to make that choice. So I want you to really think about it today. And make the right choice. Is only a fool will see the two options in front of them like this option A and option B option A is heaven option B is hell you have heard what you will get in heaven and what you, how you, what you will experience in heaven and you have heard what you will get in hell and what you will experience there now how much of a fool are you to choose option B over option A want to encourage you and I cannot re-emphasize it anymore to make the right choice to choose option A, a heaven to surrender your life today to Christ and give him a chance to show you the love that you have been missing all this time and so if you are listening and you want to make that choice today I want to give you that opportunity to repent of your sins and to accept Jesus Christ into your life as God and Savior there's no magic trick to this it's just for you to believe to act and believe so 
God, he is faithful according to his word. He is faithful and just and will forgive you of your sins once you come to him and confess it and confess them. He said he was faithful and just to forgive you of them. If you come to him with a sincere heart today, he will, no doubt about it, he will forgive you. Just call upon his name today, the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. You will be saved. So I have a prayer that I want to go through with you today. if you repeat this prayer after me and believe in your heart that you have uh, received everything that you have asked for in spite of the enemy's lies in your ears telling you differently then you will receive your salvation today God's word is sure it always accomplishes everything that he sends them forth to do there are no ifs, ifs, maybes, or buts about it. Buts about it. So wherever you are today, I want to lead you into this prayer. If you're listening live or via YouTube, you can say this prayer right now. And after it, you will be saved. So lift your hearts up to heaven. You can kneel if you want to kneel. You can close your eyes, lift your hands up if you want to. And repeat this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, I recognize that you are the Son of the true and living God. I also know that you came to earth and died for my sins. You said in your word that if I confess my sins that you will forgive me of them. So with a sincere desire to serve you I ask you please to forgive me of all of my sins and cleanse me from all my unrighteousness. Wash me in your precious blood. Make me whole. And write my name in the book of life today. I thank you for answering my prayer. And I thank you for saving me. Amen. Hallelujah. And if you have said this prayer today, congratulations and welcome into the family of Christ. Hallelujah. For you have made the right decision. You have made the right step. And uh, it is a step and, a, and it is a decision that you will never ever regret. In fact, one songwriter says, the more we serve him, is the sweeter he gets, the sweeter it goes. Day after day, the more you get to know Jesus, the more you realize, the more you feel his love. The more you'll know that you have done the right thing. But as I said before, the enemy... Yes, he's still out there. And he will be attacking you. He will try to convince you. And hear this. He cannot take what you have just received. He does not have that power. You can hold on to it. Hold on tight. And never let go. And no one can snatch it away from you. Once you are in the Father's hand, nobody, no being, no force can snatch you away from Him. 
for you will be safe and secure in his hands hallelujah so hold on tight to your salvation don't believe no lies from the enemy you have been saved and you will remain saved as long as you hold on to it get your bible read it study it talk to god pray without season and maintain your salvation build your relationship with your god hallelujah again i thank you for taking that bold step the watchman the watchman the watchman the watchman the watchman, the watchman. The watchman. Yes, and again, we have come quite quickly to the end of the program. Uh, I was your host, Minister Curtis Roach, and you were listening to the Watchman Radio Program on Everlasting Life Radio UK. And I want to extend an invitation to anyone that is in London or if you're planning a trip to London at any time and you want a place to worship on a Sunday... You can find uh, find me or find the church that I attend on uh, West Green Road in London. And the, the postcode there is N153QR. We worship there every Sunday from 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. If you'd like to have any further information... You can leave me a message on my Facebook page. You can find me by searching for uh, Minister Curtis Roach or the Watchman Radio Program. You can leave me a message and I'll be able to respond to you. You can follow me on Twitter at Roach underscore Curtis. Or you can subscribe to my YouTube channel where I post all of my radio programs where I... Uh, record and uh, post them there for you to always go back to and share them you can subscribe to my channel which is under my name Curtis Roach alternatively you can also just search for the Watchman radio program and you'll be able to find the programs there as well so every Friday from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. before the Watchman radio program I also host a program there which I call Revival Time. And in this program, I, I replay messages that were preached at Shiloh Revival Tamanaka. That's the church that I attend. You will get the un unadulterated word of God with power delivered by various uh, ministers and preachers and pastors. And uh, I bring those messages to you live if you are somewhere in the world that you are not able to hear messages or you're not able to go to church or you don't have access to certain things that you want access to i'm giving you that opportunity to hear the word of god live on this station so again thank you jesus come